Okay. Well, I'll introduce you real quick since we were just chatting and bantering back and forth. But this is Amber. She is out. I always butcher her last name. So I'm going to call you Amber. Is it Javierless? Uh, Harveyus. Harveyus. Okay. Amber Harveyus. I was close. I was close. So anyway, she is out of the yeah. Burlington area. She is a rock star agent. She, every time she speaks, my ears pop up because she just someone that draws you in and you want to listen to. Um, she was gracious enough to come on here and talk about how she's been able to scale her team, her business, and um, she's always willing to give back. So she's got some great slides and some good information. If you have questions, put it in the chat. We'll try to monitor that and ask her along the way. If you need to raise your hand, ask questions. We wanna make it collaborative. Um, don't leave anything on the table. Let's all you know, just be vulnerable. And we're going to have a great year next year. Take it away. Awesome. Um, I first just wanted to share a story just to get real vulnerable with everybody real quick. Um, if you've ever spoken to anybody that's achieved business at a high level, you will probably see and understand at some point in time, they've had to like rely on something other than them. Um, I'm in a season where I'm really trying to level up my business. And what that means is, is my thermometer of what success has looked like for me. And this can be relatable no matter, you know, what production level you're at. My thermometer of success has to shift up if I want to grow my business. Um, so I've been through the grace of God, just heavily relying on my faith recently and I was very much struggling and I felt like I had turned everything over to the Lord and put things on his feet. But then I was just holding on to this like anxiety and frustration and just, I couldn't, you know, I didn't have control over everything, um, which I, I don't want to say I'm not a control freak, but I definitely know that if you want to achieve success at a high level, you have to have systems, you have to have processes. You, you, you can't, if you're selling five to 10 listings right now, your process can't look the same if you want to sell a hundred. And that's something we're going to talk about today. So I had been super relying on my faith. I, I got up, it was like two Sunday mornings ago. My husband and I were doing cardio. Um, it was pouring down rain. I said to him, um, let's just stay at home and watch church today. I don't want to take the kids out into the rain. We can get up, do cardio. We'll just watch it on our phones. So we were still doing cardio. We had like 10 minutes more to do. I turned on church on my phone because I love the worship music. The worship music just gets me like in a vibe and just gets me like surrendered. And um, I was on the treadmill listening to the worship music and I just started like crying. And I was like, oh, this is just like compelling me. I feel guilty. We're not going. And I looked at him and I said, listen, we got to finish our cardio. We can go in, shower, get ready and make the 11 o'clock service. So we went inside. Um, we were trying to get the, we live out in the boonies, but we do have good internet. But for some reason, we had a piece of our network down that we just got fixed. But we were trying to stream church on the TV and it would not work. So we tried another TV, wouldn't work. And I'm like, okay, this is the Lord telling me I need to go to church today. So we get up, get ready, go to church, walk into church, listening to the same worship music I'd already listened to. Um, they had asked people to come down during the worship song and just like, if you need something, if you want to turn something over to him and you just want the, the pastors to pray, um, come up front. So a couple of our friends went up front and they were talking to the pastor. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to stay back here and pray for them. And I'm just going to pretend like I'm telling them all my worries. And essentially my worries were just my team not realizing we have to do things differently in today's market. And we have to prepare for the market that's coming much differently than the market that's passed. And I have these tools, I have these systems, but they just weren't plugging into and using them. We weren't seeing success. And I was just frustrated. I'm like, I am giving you guys everything, everything to be successful. I'm showing you everything that works for me. And I'm just trying to help you. And um, I just was like, so full of this, like anxiety and anxiousness. All the meanwhile, I I'm doing huge things to like help us grow a and putting my, you know, financials, you know, just not in a constraining fashion, but just taking some big risks to help our team grow. So anyways, we went about the church service that whole day. I was just like heavy in the church service, just crying, um, just like not crying, crying, but just tears, just overwhelmed. And the service is wrapping up. The pastor always like says it, a uh, a uh, last prayer music was playing and all of a sudden he said stop he said I don't usually do this sort of thing he said but the Holy Spirit's just like convicting me to to tell someone something right now 
And I was just like, okay, we've only been at this church about a year, but we are, you know, we know the pastors pretty well. They don't know what's going on in my life at this moment. Um, but anyways, he stopped and he said, Amber, I want to tell you, you're about to have your best year ever in real estate, regardless of what's happening in the market, regardless of, of what's, what's not happening right now, just know 2024 is going to be your best year ever. And in that moment, I was just, you know, sometimes you just need those little kicks of like, okay, even though you may be at a point in time where you're only selling five to 10 to 25 houses or, or 40 houses, and you want to take it to a hundred, just know that you have to internally grow. You have to internally change your thermostat of what success looks like for you. And, and you can't do it all on your own. You're going to have seasons uh, of struggle and, and grateful I'm on this end of things now, but you're going to have seasons of where you're questioning. And I would just encourage you don't ever give up. Um, so the week after that, we actually brought two of the top producing teams um, at in our local market to EXP it hasn't been officially announced yet. And then also since that time frame, I went to lunch with one of my investors and, and she brought me a spreadsheet, which is always great to see. That means, you know, she's got some stuff she wants to sell of nine listings that she wants to sell. And then just yesterday I met with a new builder um, that wants to build eight houses, flip five or six houses, and then just, you know, grow, grow and nurture our relationship and bring something to Alamance County that that's nowhere else. You know, so I, I will say like without my intentions, without my ability to to tune into my faith at times, you know, I couldn't probably have sold a hundred houses just by myself. But I think sometimes um, what we don't realize as agents is you can definitely have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't show up every day, whether it's at the office, whether it's in your relationships, whether it's at a listing appointment with positive energy that other people feel, you are not going to achieve your highest level of living. And, and that's just something that, that I focused on even when I was an agent um, selling very few houses. Um, I'll, I'll back up and tell you a little bit of my story. I moved to North Carolina in 2008, did not know a single soul here. Um, jumped into real estate and I literally sold zero houses my first year. I was uh, recently, not recently, it seems life has went so quickly, but in 2010 um, was, so I'd been in real estate two years by then, I was still in the negative. I did not turn my business into a positive, profitable business until I was year five in the business. But back then we didn't have things as teams where you could just plug in and learn and use other people's tools and knowledge to excel, you know, so I had to figure and struggle, struggle on my own. But one of the things back then that I always focused on was showing, showing up every day with a positive mental attitude and like giving my joy, smiling to people, showing people love, no matter where it was that I went, because people radiate to that. And I think even, you know, in the world we're in today, people still radiate to that. So I'm huge on doing affirmations every single morning, but especially before I go to listing appointments, especially when it's a listing appointment that I may feel a little bit unconfident in. I'm also huge on like setting intentions. Um, one of my huge intentions I set was to bring on another builder. Um, and that happened within about a month of me saying, hey, we need to bring some more builders to this area. I don't think we oftentimes realize like the power of us, the power of our energy within us is able to truly, you know, it manifest and bring things to life. Um, so those are, are things that I'm huge on. I think you have to have a positive energy force in, ever, in order to produce at a high level. But secondly, you have to, you know, I don't want to just be kumbaya over here. You know, you have to put your work and effort behind it, but you totally have to know your numbers. Um, so one thing that we use at a high level are some tools called the 12-week tracker and the daily sprint. And I'm now going to share my screen so you can see some of these. <clears throat> Everybody can see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so the 12 week tracker is literally just a system that we use that keeps us on track of what are our intentions for this week. And, and one thing, if you wanna sell hundred houses next year, you have to know what are the activities that are gonna get you there. The daily sprint is something that we just actually knocked off from one of uh, Dan Beer's agents, but it's really like priming your day for success. And, and I'll be more than happy to share our version of this with you guys. But how many conversations do you need to take? How many follow-up calls? How many videos? How many follow-up texts? Um, you need to grow yourself daily, ask for reviews and referrals daily. Um, I believe what I see either newer agents or agents that are seasoned 
we definitely can get very comfortable in being comfortable. But if you want to grow your business to the next level and sell even 50 houses next year or 100 houses next year, you have to do things a little bit differently. But I think what shuts us down oftentimes is we think that we have to do massive things differently. If I were to be very transparent with you, I probably only spend two to four hours a day on selling 100 houses a year. And it's just because I know the activities that lead me the results. I know I have to have about 10 to 15 conversations a day. I need to set one to one appointment a day or at least three to four a week in order to make 100 listings a year come to life. This year, at the end of the year, I believe we're going to have about 121 houses that we have listed. Um, we currently have a decent amount active and, and several under contract. But I know... Um, that if I don't get at least three listing appointments a week, I'm not going to hit that 100 mark. So no matter what your goal is, you have to figure out what, what does it look like? How do I back into that number to make it come to life? So I'm next going to jump to this slide. It's, it's really talking about you have to build a pipeline. And I was talking to an agent on a one-on-one -on -one this week and just saying, you know, your, your buyers can be a little bit different than your sellers, but not really. You, you have to realize what's your monthly goal. You know, my monthly goal is always to sell at least 10 houses a month. If I know what my monthly goal is, I need to have at least 10 times that in my pipeline. So if I have a goal of selling um, 12 a month, if I, if I 10 times that, I need to have 120 people in my pipeline at all times. However, 10% of that should be ready to list within the next 30 to 60 days. So that means 10% of that 12 people should be A sellers that should be ready to hit the market in the next 30 to 60 days. That means I need to go on three listing appointments every single week. I need to make at least 10 contacts a day. Whatever your contact to appointment ratio is, that's how many contacts you need to be making a day. Some people's is 20 contacts to an appointment, some is 50. Whatever that number looks like, you plug that number in here. And then you just have to be consistently providing value to your pipeline to get them ready to be ready. And that's something I've really been bringing um forefront to my team, because I think a lot of times we think we have this misperception of what does it look like to scale your business to the next level? And we think we just have to make more phone calls. And in that one phone call, I make that seller, that buyer is going to pick up the phone and they're just going to become a buyer that, that day. And that's not reality. You know, I have a system set up on the back end that's consistently dripping on people, that's consistently providing them value. I don't want to say I'm aggressive. I would say I am always willing to share my knowledge. I, I think one mistake we definitely make as agents is we assume that the normal person who buys and sells a house one, one to two times every five to 10 years knows just as much information as we do. And, and I'm guilty as this is a leader. You know, you sometimes have to slow down and meet people where they're at. And the information that seems silly, like everybody should know it, it is really the information that, that you should be selling, you should be telling your, your clients at a higher level. You know, so just to give you an idea, um, what we've been doing recently is being heavily aggressive on telling our clients essentially um, like what is happening with rates right now, you know, and we've gotten a few people like getting ready to get ready or have said, okay, I'm ready to do something now because essentially I, I don't want to be in a position that I'm in multiple offers again and paying over asking price, you know, so so we go ahead and say, what are the, what are the objections that are going to come up and let's take either emails, text messages, phone calls, voicemail drops, Facebook posts, and start dropping that information out there to overcome the objection. So by the time they, you know, do answer me back via text or via email or via phone call, you know, they're, they're going to already have all those objections removed, you know, so if it's, a, it's an objection of, um, you know, I'm waiting for the rates to drop. Well, that's great. We now have a lender that's willing to do refinances for free for five years. So that's no longer an objection to you. You know, so I, I think we oftentimes need to come from a, a place of more contribution and value and educate your clients to the level of being like so financially and just real estate savvy that it makes your job easier as an agent. And, and oftentimes they're going to work with you because they realize that you are the expert. You you are bringing in that knowledge. You are bringing in that value and you are pouring into them. And then they feel committed to you without you often even knowing it. But you have to lean into your systems and allow your systems to do some of that for you because you can't possibly 
we, we have over 10,000 people in my database. I can't possibly personally call them on a consistent basis and, and provide them that value without using the systems. Um, one other, um, so does anybody have any questions before I, I keep da, 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 going 100 miles an hour? Oh, listen to that sweet sound. Um, okay, so now I'm going to jump into some super tacti tactical stuff. Um, I started a business in a in an area where I did not know a single soul. So what what I purposely did at first was really work with buyers and allow my knowledge of working with buyers and seeing houses and learning the market empower me to become a listing agent. And, and what I mean by that was I was not confident enough at first to walk in somebody's house and say, I know what the market looks looks like, you know, I know how to sell a house. I've sold 50 houses because I had no clue what the market looked like. I had no idea what what neighborhoods were popular. I mean, I had no no clue about any of the area. So I really paused and, and worked as a buyer's agent for the first probably five to six years of my business. And then I realized like in order to take my business to the next level, that was one shift in my business is I had to do listings. You know, I couldn't just build a business around buyers that was sustainable and scalable if I didn't have listings. So I first said to myself, you know, who are the people that need to sell? You know, they're, they're going to be a little bit easier to work with than the people that, that have to get to a place of wanting to sell. So the six D's of real estate, which I'm sure most of you heard before are death, divorce, downsizing, dividends, default, and distance relocation. So let's talk about how you can find listings in each one of those sectors. Um, I consistently on a daily basis, and some people may think this is morbid, but check the obituaries daily. I look to see who's passed away. Is it a friend or a family member of one of my past clients? Is it somebody I know? Is it a past client? And just love on those people. Um, I just lost my father in June of this year. And just the people that, that showed up for me and said, you know, we want to help you sell your dad's house, you know, yada, yada, yada. You don't realize people are in so much emotional distress at this time. And if you can step in and help them, um, you know, it's a very overwhelming, you know, time in life emotionally, but also you have a financial stress. And if people aren't financially able to keep that mortgage up, and if that estate was not created or, or if a will wasn't in place and they don't know what to do next, your simple card your flowers, you attending the funeral opens the door to truly help them at a very high level at a point in time they need it more than they'll probably ever, ever need you again as a real estate agent. Because your knowledge can be very integral on whether or not this can honestly go in, in a good way or not, you know, for them. And, and there's no book that tells you get an estate attorney, open up the probate. You have 90 days to sell after the probate period starts. There's nothing that tells you any of this. And, and, and most people don't know where to go. And at this point in time, they're, they're honestly not even worried about it, you know, because they're, they're so worried about the loss and the mourning of, of their loved one. They don't even want to begin to think about how do I sell the house? How do I get all the personal stuff out of the house? Um, you know, yada, yada, yada. So if you can step in and just show up for them at a point in time, they need them, you will win a client for life. Um, the next one is divorce. I think with divorces, um, where I've seen my success is I'm an agent that that is very much positive branding in the community. I think I'm um, an agent that carries myself with an extremely high level of professionalism. Um, and that's important in situations like this. I think it's also a little bit of a blessing that I'm not from here and I don't know all the history and background and the who's the who. Um, that helps too, you know, but I think anytime that you can make maybe network yourself with a divorce attorney and just make sure you're presenting yourself in a way and, and handle yourself in a way that you're approachable to a, a divorce situation is, is a great way to get business no matter what the market looks like. Downsizing is huge in our area. Obviously, North Carolina is like baby boomer central, also relocation, retiree central, you know, so you have to just get your, yourself in front of those people that are downsizing. We are huge on doing downsize seminars here locally. Um, we pay attention to who are in high equity communities. Right now, we have a large portion of our business that's in a position that's ready to move up into those larger homes. Those larger homes are usually older people that are ready to downsize. So oftentimes 
do either door knock, do golden letters, do a market analysis for those high equity people, because they oftentimes don't know what their house is worth. And I think that's also something that we're also super, super guilty of as agents is we don't realize that most people look on Zillow or the tax value and think that's the value of their home. But if you're able to to offer them value before they've been committed to you and say, hey, here's what I think your house is worth. Here's what three homes have sold for in your neighborhood. Lean into KV Core or whatever, whatever other CRM system you have and just set them up to receive a market update. They oftentimes will become a seller or, or potentially an off-market listing for you for another buyer that you have that wants to move into their home. So we heavily focus, you know, on doing like matchmaking, even within our team, we have about 12% market share here locally in listings. And we're huge on who do we have coming up that would sell? And what houses do we have coming up that would match? And how do we get people to move? Because what we're seeing right now, until the right house pops up, these people aren't ready to do anything. But if we can find the right house, it becomes a domino effect. And we can oftentimes sell three or four houses internally, even off market, which is a lot less stress for our sellers and just be a win-win. So we're huge on, on leaning into one another to do that as well within the team. And then dividends. Dividends are really essentially people that look at real estate as investing and wealth building. Um, we're a member of TRIA. We hold local masterminds to pour into our investors. I send out an email every single month to um, educate and, and give knowledge to our investors of this is what's happening in the market. That email is something that I create, but it's also something that I give value to our team as well and letting them know like, what do inventory levels look like? What's list price to sales price ratio look like? Um, you know, in certain, in certain school districts, what do we see the month supply of inventory is? You know, so like right now, the the I've had one-on-ones with my investors. I try to do that once a quarter. You know, I've been telling them, look, we know rates are dropping. Here's what inventory levels look like in, in the price range that you usually end up at in, in your flips. We need to be ready come first quarter to make sure that we have inventory on the market so we can be more profitable than really what we are being right now. Because right now, some of our investor flips, there's a decent amount of inventory and we're having to sit on them, which is never something that we want to do when, when they have been used to you know, being on, on the market a week or so. We're now on the market two to three weeks or even a month. So one more month of interest carry really has not been in their equation for profitability. So with my investors and with my builders, you just have to present to them a high level of value. You have to present to them market knowledge. You have to pre present to them ways to streamline their processes so they too can grow and expand their business as well. And when you do that together alongside with them, they stay committed to you almost forever. Um, some of my investors I've been working with and builders I've been working with 10 plus years. And that is just something that compounds over time. And if I know every year from one of my investors, we're going to sell 15 houses together. And my other builder, I'm going to send sell 20 houses together. That right there is already 35 listings. Um, just this past week, I had mentioned that I met with my investor. She brought me nine listings. I met with another builder that wants to sell eight. I know I have five more coming from another builder. I have another builder that, that I'm working with that's going to be listing um, at the beginning of the year. And please know, in the past, I haven't had this much builder investor activity. But this is how I'm leveling up and have been intentional on growing my business to the next level because those investors and those builder transactions take a lot less of my time. So it allows me to, to bring listings to my team, but also allow my agents to go and do more of the resale stuff that will help us keep you know producing at a much more grander level. So no matter where you're at, I think you definitely need to start pouring value into your investors, into your builders, even if they're not your clients yet, add them to your, your database emails and start dripping and pouring value on them. Ask if you can do videos of their neighborhood, ask if you can do open houses in their neighborhood, find them land and find them houses to flip. If you start showing up and show that you're invested in growing their business, it, it's just going to make them want to commit to you at a much higher level. Um, default homes. This is not something that we've done that much of most recently, but some of my investors are, are ready to ramp up. So we've been doing more golden letters to homeowners that are, are doing defaults, door knocking vacant homes, doing direct mail, or excuse me, we door knock. And within that neighborhood, we find a vacant home. And whenever we find a vacant home, we figure out who, who are they? How can we find their phone number? How do we reach out to them? Do they want to sell? Um, and then through the, the grace of God, my, my kid's T-ball coach was actually code enforcement in Burlington. So I reached out to him a week ago and said, hey, 
you know, as you're doing your code enforcement, if there's anything that you see, any houses that you see that that would be potentially great for one of our investors, send it to me. And he literally, he gets all the information, address, owner, phone number, and sends it over to me now. So that's a win-win. And then um, just as most of you probably are in areas where there's lots of, of commercial development and job growth, you need to know what companies are moving to your area. I believe last year we had four or five transactions of just public distribution moving, you know, between here and Greensboro. We have Amazon coming. We have Toyota Battery Factory coming. So we've been super intentional, too, on like how do we lead generate for listings in those areas that then will bring us buyers to and allow us to grow our market share in those areas as well, because they're not that far away from us. So always being aware of what what is coming and then just finding inventory for your investors, for your new construction, find dirt. I had mentioned that a few moments ago. Um, so our, our team, our top five lead sources are always our sphere of influence on our past clients, referrals from our VIPs, our social media, golden letters have been working very well for us, and then just door knocking and getting face to face. Um, oftentimes, we can find out a lot of information about the neighborhood, who wants to sell, um, who may be selling, who's sick, um, essentially just by door knocking. We oftentimes find people um, within... The neighborhood that that know everything and then if we can just love on them bring them a little treat afterwards show up again a few months later send them a thank you letter in the mail we do this intentionally so we do this in neighborhoods that we know we have buyers that want to buy so then oftentimes we can capture a listing we find a house for our buyer our buyer has a house to sell we can now list their house so we can oftentimes get three transactions out of door knocking and finding a house for one of our buyers which is always how you want to grow your business to the next level. Um, let me answer a few of these questions. Um, how do you establish your relationship with the builder to where they will use you? What does that look like? So what I've done in the past is really just showed up um, and planted those seeds over time. I think anytime you go to grow your business, you have to know that it, that some of this has not happened overnight. Some of this has been them watching you succeed. It's been you watching up for, you know, the blue tape walkthrough and creating that relationship with the builder. Some of it has been as bold as, you know, we've had a, a local builder that used an agent forever. I got wind that, that their relationship was severed. That same day, I reached out to that builder and said, hey, I would love to meet with you. Here's everything that we do for our builders. I send them my listing kit. He said, absolutely, come meet with me. So some of it is you just have to, be bold enough to go after the business, but also know that you're there to provide them value as well. Um, what is a golden letter? A golden letter is essentially a letter that we mail directly to homeowners that says, hey, we have somebody looking to live in your neighborhood. Do you know anybody that wants to sell? And I've done some as aggressive as saying, hey, we have this family that wants to move back to Burlington. They only want to be in your neighborhood. Here's what their price range is. I believe your house fits in that price range. The reason why we put the price range in there is because it triggers them. And sometimes they don't realize their house is worth that much. It triggers them to be like, oh, well, I would might sell for that. Um, but we do it twofold. We've already usually door knock that neighborhood. Then we send the golden letter. Then they've probably gotten a direct mail postcard. I may have looked them up on Facebook and sent them a message too. So it's, the golden letters don't just work one time when you send a golden letter. You have to do activities around them to get people to truly raise their hand and reach out to you. Okay, I'll keep on going. Um, we are also huge on just staying in front of our database, but staying in front of an, uh, in our database in a way that aligns with our values. So usually when we do events, we're also giving back in some way, shape or form. So even like tomorrow night, we have a Christmas cheer event, which we're giving back, back to our local Christmas cheer, which provides toys, gifts for, for families and those in need. But then the event is Santa Claus, um, food trucks, s'mores around the fireplace, princesses, fake snow, local vendors, local community um, shops that we're supporting too. But it's a, it's an event that we feel like our sphere would love to come to, but it's a way for us to touch them. It's a way for us to give back to local businesses. Local business owners are usually very well networked and know a lot of people and are looked at as somebody in the community that, that people turn to when they need something. Um, so we try to just always embrace all of that, no matter what it is we're doing, whether it's an event, whether it's a giveaway, whether, you know, there, there's a community need. We just always try to embrace all of those things. Um, again, because I'm all about the positive vibes and energy and just giving back and showing others love. I think that sometimes helps us in our business more than we realize. 
And then just having a great positive online community presence, I believe is huge to always be providing value, letting people know market updates, new listings, local community info, upcoming events local businesses that are maybe open or local businesses that are having sales. And then also like be the knowledge, be what businesses are coming to this area. What are things people want to know? You know, even last week there was a post of like Al Alamance roads widening. Well, people like to hear stuff like that. And oftentimes when you post it on social media and people interact with it, all it does is give you more brand awareness in the community. Um, you have to stay interactive be human and be relatable. This is something I've been super intentional with, especially after COVID. I think a lot of us went in a closet and hide and became online Facebook real estate rock stars. Those relationships in person and the community go much further than, than your Facebook posts do. So showing up for events, whether it's a chamber of commerce event, whether it's just supporting a local business, you know, their grand opening, whether it's just attending a local event and seeing 50 people, um, whether it's even just going to lunch sometimes with people and just seeing people out in public, the more you can stay in front of people, the more that you're going to stay top of mind, the more your business is truly going to grow. We are huge on giving back, especially support to support um, anything that really aligns with our values. And, and just remember, like your community is your business and you have to support them. And anytime you support others, they're going to support you back. My husband and I are both local business owners and we always get so frustrated with other local business owners that want to like buy something on Amazon that you could buy in our local community. It is huge to support the other people that are in the exact same position as you are. Um, it, it's just a good thing to do. And the more good you do, the more good that comes back to you. And then, you know, this may have seemed a little overwhelming, but just please know that a lot of what we do, we embrace technology as well. You know, you have to have those in-person you know, face-to-face -face communications. You have to have phone calls. You have to have text messages. But but where what you really need to lean in, lean in on is using systems that ensure that you stay consistent to ensure that you're staying in front of people because you possibly can't reach people on the masses all by yourself. You know, so systems we use, KV Core is very, very simple, user-friendly to use. Almost everybody in our in our database is set up to receive a market update. Um, and then they get dripped on with our value touched emails, whether that's a market update, an event that we're that's going happening in the community, or just anything that we feel like people would would want to know. Fellow is a new um, system we just started using about six months ago, but I'll tell you that this has been a game changer in staying in front of our current database and really allowing us to see. Who is it that potentially would sell? Because if they click on that value, they're curious in some way, shape, or form. So we've gotten some good conversations going. I won't say that I've gotten a listing quite yet, but I definitely feel like we've gotten some good conversations going that will turn into listings this next year. But I probably get, I would say, five to 10 value requests a week out of that. So I know the, the conversion's coming. It's just, it's getting people to interact with us that weren't interacting with us before. CSU is what we use to track our pipeline. If you don't keep up with who's in your pipeline and who's raising your hand that potentially would buy or sell within the next year, you need to. Because when you get busy, you're going to forget people. And if you start to forget one person a month, I mean, that's 12 people a year. That's you growing your business to the next level and something so simple. And then another thing that we've definitely gotten a lot of people to raise their hands on this year is Dan Beer and John Sheplak Shake the Tree emails. If you haven't signed up for their marketing program, they drop out these little one-liner, silly, what I felt like were silly emails. We blast it to our database and we probably get 30 to 50 people responding and interacting back with us. So just know if you want to grow your business, no matter if it's five more houses next year, 10 more houses next year, or 100, you have to do things differently. And, and it's totally a numbers game. The more you show up in front of others, you know, it's after that, it just becomes, can you convert them? And, and you can definitely take your business to whatever level it is you want to, you know, if you are to do those things. So that's all I have, unless anybody has questions. I'm an open book, so ask away. Well, Amber, I'm going to say that that was amazing and you are amazing. And the fun thing is that, um, you know, I think a lot of people might jump on a call like this and be like, oh my God, I want her secrets and I want to know exactly what she's doing. And at the end of the day, it's, you do a lot of work every single day consistently yeah. and you never give up and you have been doing it for what, seven, eight years now. 
how long 10 mm -hmm. yeah 15 um, actually 15. there you go so 15 years like I think a lot of times people will you know they want your results but they they want that but they are not willing to do what it takes so they're not the person that is going to get the results because they don't do the activities and and I want to mm -hmm. make sure people understand that whenever wherever phase of their business they're in if they're in year one forecast to year five or six or seven if you're in year seven and you're at 30 deals and you want to get to 100 it's probably going to take another five years of, of growth, there is no 12 months and you can be Amber. Like, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Right. So I just want to get the, in, in 12 months, I'm not going to be Tina. You have to realize like you have to do what you need to do to get to that next step. And, and I think oftentimes we miscalculate. It can happen a relatively short period of time if you put your head down and, and you're intentional about it. But I think we oftentimes think that we can just do a little bit more it's every day I do more. I mean, and I'll be very transparent. I have had children and had C-sections and been back at work seven days later. Um, my dad passed away. I took seven to 10 days off work, but was lead genning and doing stuff in the midst of it all. My biggest thing, and, and this is just something that I would encourage all of you to lean in on is learning the law of momentum. I, in my 15 years of being an agent have probably only taken seven days off three times when I got married, when my father passed away. And after my father passed away, my husband's like, you need to go on a vacation. So two of those were this year. You can't just check out. <laughs> and if you have the momentum and energy going, you know, there's things I do every single day, whether I'm sick, whether my, you know, no matter what's happened in life, you know, I do certain activities every single day to ensure that I don't lose momentum. Because if I lose momentum, it'll take me three months to get it back. And what I mean by that is momentum in my energy of being confident enough to convert people to appointments, to setting those appointments, to then converting that appointment to a listing. And even when you go out on the listing, you have to share that momentum with your seller. Um, I'm training the girls on my team to do listings now. And, and, you know, I think a lot of times where I win is I go on the listing appointment. I prepare to go on the listing appointment. I know when I can do photos. I measure the house while I'm there, as long as it's not a crazy house to measure. I, I have my market analysis back to them, fine-tuned within 12 to 24 hours. I already have the photos set up. I keep people moving. The longer, and if you sell 100 houses, you have to keep people moving. You have to keep moving because you can't go on three listing appointments and do three listing appointments a week after you went on the listing appointment because- it, it just doesn't work that way. You got to like, you have to do business differently. And that's why I was, you know, intentionally saying, if you want to grow your business, you have to learn that you can't, how you're doing it now is not going to get you to where you want to go. So what I do is I prepare for the listing appointment. I gather as much information as I can possible. I put it in, in what we call is our like our CSU input form. I've gotten a lot of the information before I even go out to the listing appointment. When I'm in the listing appointment, it's really just verifying some of this. And then within 12 to 24 hours, I get them a market analysis back or do it right there in front of them. Say, this is the list price we're going to list at. We're going to take photos this day. We're going to do X, Y, and Z between now and then and keep them going. If it takes you a week to get that market analysis to them or even two to three days sometimes, you just don't know where their minds went. How often have you been like in the moment ready to buy something? but you wait two or three days and like, oh, I didn't need it anyways. People will do that as a seller too. So a lot of the times, you know, why my conversion is probably so high is I bring energy and momentum to them. So they don't want to work with anybody else. They don't question it. They don't think, oh, we need to wait another month to sell our house. It happens sometimes, but not a lot. You have to keep your momentum moving forward because you need to go on to the next, next listing and have your sole focus be on the next listing too. That was something I wanted to share, but I'm got on a tangent somewhere else. And do you yes, think that, I, do you, go ahead, do, you, do you think that your drive is, I think a lot of people go, man, I just don't want to work that hard or, you know, I, maybe I, they don't need the money or like, what do you think? I, I think for me, I, if I know you, because, you know, I, as I've gotten to know you, it's like not even about money. It's like your drive for growth. Yeah. Like you do crave yeah. to grow go backwards it that's the pain it's not like oh my god I need to make 700,000 it's no I need to grow and make sure that I'm moving forward that's why I think you yeah. push clients forward because you push yourself forward absolutely I definitely just match and mirror what I'm doing 
doing internally with others. And, and what I think I've realized over time is a lot of people need this. Um, I think it's something that was given to me, you know, through my life situations, but at the same time, like, I feel like we're only here for, for a short period of time, like live it to your best capabilities, like do your best, give it your all, give other people your all, encourage them, let them know that you're here to help them. And oftentimes I feel like, you know, I, if I'm up against another agent, it's my ability to give people that energy and let them know that like, I'm here to help you. Like I'm helping my own family. You know, what, what does that mean? If you want to break down and get nitty gritty on the numbers, I'm savvy enough to get nitty gritty on the numbers of what it means. But if I need to emotionally meet you where you're at, because oftentimes sellers are in an emotional situation of some capacity, I'm willing and vulnerable enough to be human, to connect with you to not even just during this transaction, but afterwards I was texting with a client that I literally sold a house to like eight years ago this morning and just told her like, you were on my heart this morning. I'm praying for you. And she's like, I'm going for my last chemo treatment today. And I hope my blood levels are good, good enough to be able to get it. You have to be that person to people to, to build a huge, huge high level business. I'm not saying that's what everybody needs to be, but that's what's worked for me is really just like loving on people beyond real estate and letting them know that you truly do care for them. And, you know, I, I would totally agree with you, Tina. Like I going backwards is not an option in my world. I was not raised like that. That was, you know, not the values my, my father gave me. And, and now my purpose is like, how do I share this with other people, whether it's clients, whether it's agents on my team, you know, just this week, I've had like three business owners reach out to me and say, Hey, when can I meet with you? Because I, I want to, I want to grow my business. And I want to know like what it is you do to stay motivated. How have you scaled yourself? What are the activities you did? You know, and a lot of them don't even have the simple stuff of like a PL statement, you know, so that again is value that I'm providing to other local business owners in my sphere. What does stuff like that do for your business? I mean, it's huge. If you can provide people value and knowledge and, and they've asked me, how much are you going to charge? I'm like, no, nothing. Just send us referrals. You know, it's share your knowledge with the world. I think the most sinful thing you can do is have all this knowledge bottled up that you're not sharing with others, because if you can help other people grow, if you can change other people's lives, you, your life is just going to be impacted and changed tenfold. Eric, go ahead. Hey, Amber, um, yeah. thanks so much for um, doing this this morning. But I just had a question. And actually, I think my buddy Jay Sutton, he had the same question to um, the 12 week uh, spreadsheet. Did you purchase mm -hmm. that or is that something that you created yourself? Uh, so we created ourselves, and we've kind of hybrided it to like the sheets in it that we need. It was something that we started using when we were actually at Keller Williams in their coaching program. Okay. And then we came to EXP and just changed it a little bit just because there was some stuff in there we used and didn't use, but it's a whole worksheet. And I would love to do a training on this sometime. It's a whole worksheet that goes from every, everything from um, your GPS. So what do you want your mm -hmm. year to look like? And what are the three things you need to focus on? The 12 week tracker really breaks it down to more of a weekly basis. So we take, what are, what are our annual goals? What are our quarterly goals look like? And we operate on quarterly goals now. We we don't, the annuals are great, but if we can get the weeks to win, the, the month to win, the quarter to win, the year wins. So we do a 12-week tracker every single week, which is where you see I'm like super hyper-focused on, I need to go on this many listing appointments. You know, I need to do five CMAs for past clients. I have activities on there every week that are very strategic to make everything come to life. And I think that's what helps me personally stay motivated and keep momentum because I know what I need to do every single week. It doesn't change. And I think a lot of people think, you know, success is doing something unique. No, it's not. It's really boring. I do the same activities every single week, but as you do them more, it takes less time. And, and the more you perfect them, that's how you, you know, level up your business to the next level by being okay. able to do more. Well, let me know when that class is. Yeah, I will I'll do it sometime soon. Um, and also within that 12 week tracker, we also have a sheet too. That's a net worth tracker, which we love to lean in on and just help us, you know, understand it and, and realize money and how you grow your net worth as well. Oh, and Amber, tell them about um, the event we're going to be doing out your way in January. Yeah. Yeah. January 17th is the day, I believe January 17th, we're going to be doing, um, an empower, um, conference. Um, we're super excited to have you guys, um, to our area, to our little world. We definitely are in a little niche pocket between, you know, Greensboro, Asheboro, 
you know, Hillsboro, Mevin, everything's just growing together. So, so we have lots of agents that are looking to just truly level up their business. We've been doing local masterminds here for about a year and we just feel like we're kind of lost between like two powerhouses. So anytime that we can bring knowledge and information here, it's just going to help our local agents level up and help us all work together at a higher level. So we are super excited about that and appreciate y'all. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. I'm excited to learn from you guys there too, because just taking little nuggets Anna will probably be doing her tech stack or working genius. So that's going to be a fun one. Any other questions for Amber? Yeah, this was so fantastic. Good. So good. Yeah. Go good ahead. Morning. I had a few questions. I'm Victoria Goins. I'm here in uh, the South Carolina area. Yeah. Um, I watched your video yesterday, actually. Oh, which video? Yeah. Oh, uh, three, what was it? The three. Yeah. 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 Um, so the empower event, I don't know exactly where you are located, but I thought I might, I'm in South Carolina. I thought I might pop up to North Carolina, depending. So where exactly is your January 17th event going to be? It's going to be in Burlington at Trailhead Church. Okay. It's Graham, actually a Graham. We and did then, it. So where it's like centrally located people that would potentially come to the triangle. Greensboro's 20 minutes away. Ashboro's 30 minutes away. So it's centrally located for everybody. Awesome. And then I noticed, um, that Deanna uh, had a question that I was also interested in. Um, I kind of approach real estate through the lens of design and have been wanting to partner with builders mm -hmm. uh, for 2024. Mm -hmm. That's one of my kind of like big rocks or things that I want to focus on. I think it just aligns really well with what I do. And so Amber asked, how do you establish a relationship? And, and I'm really curious too, like how you identify the builders how you approach them, how you partner with them. And I really would love to hear more about that specifically. Yeah. Um, ideally, you have to think those, I don't want to say smaller or entry-level builders are the ones that need your knowledge. So we, almost 10 years ago, started to work with Joey Carter. Um, he's a local smart builder. He probably does 20 to 30 houses a year. Um but we started working with him and really saying, how can we help streamline your process? How can we help find you land? And how can we get you more exposure? And I also come from a design background and we're actually building some houses alongside with him in a different LLC now. Um, I think what you could take to him, and this is what I took to Joey, is what are the looks that are going to help your house sell for more and quicker? And what are niches that are not being met by the big builders right now? You know, so in our little area, we said, you know, one plus acre lots, one story homes with bonuses with a trendy, affordable look, keep them under a certain price point. So if you're able to bring the builder that knowledge, help him pick out the selections and honestly offer your expertise in that regard, find them the land, and then through your marketing exposure, help him build his brand. That's a relationship that becomes more like a partnership. You know, so I think you just have to maybe join the Home Builders Association, but then just be more aggressive and, and create a little package of like, you know, this is what I could do for you. And until maybe he gives you the listings, just say, you know, can I take a video of your your property and put it on my social media? You know, just give, give, give until eventually they're like, okay, I'm ready to use you as a listing agent, but you just have to meet them where they're at. And sometimes I just point blank, ask them like, what is it I can do for you this year? And what are your goals? And currently how many lots do you have and how many homes do you want to sell? Well, how do I help fill that gap for you? Because I think anytime you can take stuff off their plate and provide them value that helps them grow their business, they're going to commit to you. Yeah, I love that. I love that you're really not asking them for their business at first. You're just really trying to see yeah. how you can help them. Um, and you're immediately yeah. just, just doing that and bringing value and just offering that knowledge. Um, so I, I really, really love that. Thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. Victoria? Oh, that was you. Yeah. I'm gonna put your hand down. Perfect. Okay. All righty. Well, that's it. I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. And we'd love to see you all on January 17th. Um, I appreciate everybody showing up today. I know a lot of people are checked out this week, but thank you. And I hope everybody took away something that they can help grow their business next year. This is fantastic, Amber. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. you. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. You too. Merry Christmas.